In this case, we can see the lymph node, which is diffusely infiltrated by some kind of lymphoproliferation. Cortical, paracortical, and medullary areas are completely lost. The normal architecture of the lymph node is completely effaced. And uh, here we can even see some necrosis and necrotic areas. Uh, the lymph node is not well circumscribed and in the periphery we can see the infiltration of the adjacent adipose tissue which is quite a useful sign of lymphoproliferation. And here we can see the adipose cells and in between the adipose cells there is an infiltration uh, by the malignant monoclonal cells. On a low magnification we can see that the infiltration is really diffuse. We do not see any nodular areas or vaguely nodular architecture. We do not see uh, preserved germinal centers or preserved architecture in some smaller areas as we sometimes see in some kind or some types of uh, lymphoproliferations. So let's go closer to see what types of cells do we have here. Okay, and even, even in this magnification we can see that the cells are quite large. And uh, uh, this is the highest magnification possible. And we have multiple different types of cells here. Uh, this is necrosis. Here we have some uh, smaller blood vessel. Uh, this is mitotic figure. And uh, here we have uh, a small amount of uh, dispersed reactive normal lymphocytes. Those are uh, these cells with round, small nuclei uh, without visible cytoplasm. So uh, those cells are benign reactive lymphocytes, B cells or T cells. And uh, they are not atypical. They are quite useful because we can compare the, uh, the di uh, diameter of the normal lymphocyte uh, with the diameter of these um, malignant large cells. And we can see that these cells are much larger than, um, than the normal lymphocytes. So two or three times larger. Uh, these large cells would be positive for immunohistochemical B cell markers like CD20. Uh, CD19, CD79A, PEX5, and, and all other B cell markers. So this is an example of diffuse large B cell lymphoma. In the most cases of diffuse large B cell lymphoma, we can see two types of cells, centroblasts and immunoblasts. Centroblasts are large non-cleaved cells uh, <clears throat> with uh, multiple nucleoli that are lo localized uh, close uh, to the nuclear membrane. Like for example here we can see one, two, three small nucleoli. Another nice centroblast uh, is this, this one, this. Uh, basically most of these cells are centroblasts. Immunoblasts on the other hand are the cells uh, with single centrally located larger nucleolus in this case, they are usually slightly larger than centroblasts, but not, not always. Well, this is another area where the immunoblasts are more common. So this is an example of immunoblast with one single larger nucleolus. This would be immunoblast. And also here, 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 well, maybe here. Morphologically, we can differentiate a few types of diffuse large B-cell lymphoma based on the <clears throat> most predominant type of cell. So this would be an example of centroblast uh, or centroblastic variant. If the immunoblast um, represent more than 90% of the cells, uh, we can diagnose immunoblastic variant. Immunoblastic variant um, is reported to have worse prognosis than centroplastic variant. Sometimes, in some cases, we can see uh, bizarre cells, really atypical cells, reed sternberg like cells, and those are characteristic for anaplastic variant of diffuse large B-cell lymphoma, which is the less common subtype. 
these eosinophilic uh, strands, those are collagen fibers, and the fibrosis is more predominant in extranodal uh, diffuse large B cell lymphomas. Some cases of DLBCL are composed of uh, medium sized cells, but they should be always larger than uh, the nucleus of histiocyte uh, by definition. The LBCL is the most common type of non Hodgkin lymphoma worldwide and it predominant, <coughs> pr predominantly affects older adults. Uh, however, the subset of cases can be seen in children and uh, young adults. It is slightly more common in, uh, in males. It is aggressive type of lymphoma and it requires chemotherapy. Based on the, on the gene expression profiling, we can differentiate the two major groups of DLBCL. The first one is the germinal central B cell lymphoma, where the gene expression profile is similar uh, to the germinal central B cells in the normal lymph node. And the second subtype is activated B cell uh, type or group, where the gene expression profile is similar to activated or post germinal central B cells or activated B cells or post germinal central B cells. The germinal central B cell type has slightly better prognosis. In the normal practice, we uh, use immunohistochemical markers to differentiate between these two groups. Well, it is not 100% correct, but um, it is quite quite useful, and it works in majority of cases. So we use Hans algorithm, uh, where the three immunohistochemical markers are used: CD10, uh, which is commonly positive in the germinal central B cells, BCL6, which is also positive in germinal central B cells, and uh, MUM1 which is positive in the post-germinal central B cells. According to WHO update in 2016, we should always check for, uh, we should also check for double expressors and the uh, positivity of BCL2 and MYC um, <clears throat> is associated with uh, worse prognosis. Also so-called double and triple hit lymphomas should be excluded from the DLBCL group and they should be called high-grade B cell lymphoma. So in case of positivity of double expressors, we also do genetic testing. And we are searching for uh, the translocation involving uh, the BCL6, BCL2, and MYC genes. Positivity for CD30 should also be checked because it is useful for targeted therapy. Okay, so that's an example of diffuse large B-cell lymphoma, and thanks for watching.